L'Oreal is a French cosmetics and consumer products group focusing on hair and skin products. So this one is French and of course it was founded uh, sometime in the course of the last century and it's a global player, it's big in the United States of America. Its core brands are things like Elsev, which is the number two global shampoo provider. And it is a really a truly global business in terms of its reach. Market cap is $106.8 billion, PE of 33.3, .3, and a dividend yield here of 1.9%. Do you favor these products, Chantal? Yeah, I think the nice thing about L'Oreal is that they're not only focused on the mass consumer. So it's not only the stuff you get in pick and pay. Um, it's the stuff that you have to go out and look to buy. It's high-end cosmetics, high-end shampoos. Uh, they just bought um, Urban Decay, which is mm. widely assumed to be one of the, the, the best makeup brands in the world. Um, and then they also have this fragrance angle, branded fragrances. It, it, they really do cater for everyone. And um, it's, it's a good, solid business. Founded by Lillian Betancourt. Yeah, in fact, it was founded by her dad, Eugene Schuller. Lillian she was at the helm for a while. She is the second richest woman in the world, I think. She's in her late 90s. I think she's gone a bit, you know, into the clouds. Well, let's have a look at the share price graph <laughs> on that note. So this is the US ADR we're looking at here, which is trading just below $40 a share. In France, in the market in Paris, it's done a little bit better. So there's a bit of an effect there of the euro versus the dollar coming to play. But it is in recovery mode. And it looks like a, a solid performer. Remember, because it's kind of got European roots, it's a little bit bigger there than it is in the US. So it's like more than a third of sales are in Europe. I think the US is about 25%. Another 20% is Asia Pacific. But its high growth markets are like Africa and South America. It's got a research center in Brazil where people are very keen on that stuff. And that's part of the attraction, is to you grow faster. You hold this one as well ones. in your portfolio. We do, we do. And it's a stock that's done okay for us. I wouldn't say it's beaten the skin off the ball. Is we would have hoped it would have done better. Is shoot the lights out down the line? Look, it's well managed and it's got great brands and good margins. And it's really just an economic growth success story. Yeah. So you need Europe to fire up a little bit. Europe's been a bit anemic. Yeah, because even though people aren't down trading necessarily, they won't be up trading at the moment. And they probably won't get involved in personal care if they haven't been involved in personal care before or cared about personal care before. Um, and that's where economic growth is but really needed. But you would still needed. assume being higher end products that this would be more defensive it than is your defensive. other stuff. It is defensive, but it's not going to shoot the lights out in the near term if there isn't some sort of growth accelerant in Europe. Mm. Hot or not? Um, I would still be hot on this stock. Um, it is a good one to hold. It's um, probably a good entry point for it as well. I see from the last time we spoke to uh, spoke about it, the forward PE ratio actually came back a little bit, which means the stock is a little bit cheaper. Um, and just a really nice core holding as well. Cool, hot or not? Yep, I think that's a good summary. Hot for me too.